this video, we're going to be looking at two examples of finding Taylor and Maclaurin series. In our first example, we're interested in finding the Maclaurin series for f of x equals e to the x, and also finding the radius of convergence. So remember that the Maclaurin series is the power series where we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivatives at 0 over n factorial times x to the n. So one way to help us figure out what um, the formula here will be for our nth derivative is to figure out the derivatives for the first couple of values of n and then look for a pattern. Here it'll be a fairly clear pattern, but we'll just get in the habit of organizing a nice table to help us figure out those values. So I'm going to look at columns here for n, for the nth derivative, for what the nth derivative is at the value that I'm centered on, in this case 0. And then we could also look at what that value divided by n factorial will be. Okay, so we'll just look at this for values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 for n, just to get the idea here. So I'll set up my table. This is really just to help me organize my work. Okay, so notice that um, my function here is e to the x. So when n equals 0, that's the, the zeroth derivative, so that's just the original function here. Um, and then we know that whenever we take the derivative e to the x, we're just getting e to the x. So the first derivative is e to the x, second derivative, etc. Actually, all our derivatives will be e to the x. So then when I plug in 0 for x, this will all be e to the 0. And we know e to the 0 is equal to 1. Okay, so that value will all be 1. So over here, what I would be doing is taking this, this value here and dividing by n factorial. So I would have 1 over 0 factorial. I'll notice that that would be 1. I'd have 1 over 1 factorial. I'll just leave it in this form here. Then I'll have 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, 1 over 4 factorial. So the pattern that we should be seeing here is that it looks like our f n of 0, nth derivative at 0 over n factorial, is going to end up being equal to 1 over n factorial. Okay, well that means that our Maclaurin series here is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial times x to the n, or x to the n over n factorial. Okay, so that's our Maclaurin series for the function e to the x. So that was what we found Okay, for our, based on our pattern. Um, this is actually a series that we saw before um, in section 11.8. Okay, so we've seen this. And when we found the radius and interval of convergence for this series back in section 11.8, um, we found that the radius of convergence was infinity and the interval of convergence was then all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. So because we've already um, found the radius and interval of convergence for this problem, we're not going to go through that again. Notice that what I'm not saying yet is that e to the x is equal to this. That'll come later. Right now I'm just saying that this is the Maclaurin series for e to the x. Um, one other useful fact that comes out of this, okay, is that um, since this is a convergent series, okay, because we're saying that um, the radius of convergence here is uh, infinity, interval of convergence is all real numbers, the series always converges. So since the sum from n equals infinity, excuse me, n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial converges, okay, we know that convergent series have the property that the terms must be going to zero. Okay, so now we get this limit fact that will come up sometimes, that the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n over n factorial must be equal to zero. Okay, so anytime you have some kind of um, exponential divided by n factorial, if this was 2 to the n or 5 to the n over n factorial, you would know that that limit as n goes to infinity would be equal to 0. Okay, so we'll see that 
will be useful to use in some future problems. So let's look at one more example of finding um, a Taylor series. Remember the Maclaurin series is just the Taylor series with a equals zero. So we started with a simple one. Let's look at another example here. Here we want to find the Taylor series for cosine x centered at a equals pi. Okay, and then we want to go ahead and also find the radius of convergence. Remember our Taylor series is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. Okay, so again we're going to organize our work in a nice chart. So I need to look at um, finding the derivatives for the first several values of n. We'll go um, up to four. We're trying to get enough to see a pattern um, so that we can write down what the, what the Taylor series looks like. So I'm going to need to find some nth derivatives. The nth derivative evaluated at pi. And I'll also think about what the nth derivative at pi divided by n factorial is. So that last column is really that, that full coefficient. Okay. So we're looking at this for 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So again, remember that the, the 0 with derivative here is just the original function. So this is cosine x. We know that the um, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of sine is cosine, so I'll have negative cosine here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this will be back to positive sine. And then the derivative of sine is cosine, so it's cycled through actually all the possible um, derivatives here. So now what about plugging in pi here? Well, we know that cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi would be 0. Cosine of pi is again negative 1, so this would be negative times negative 1 or positive 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Cos or sine of pi, excuse me, is 0 cosine of pi here would be negative 1. Okay, so what are we going to get over here? Well this is negative 1 over 0 factorial. Then this would be 0 over 1 factorial, but that's just going to be 0. Okay, then I'll have 1 over 2 factorial, 0 over 3 factorial, which will just be 0. Okay, so notice that this is working out a little bit differently than what we had before. Um, let's see, that was negative. Then I'm going to have um, a negative 1 here over 4 factorial. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier in that I have um, some 0 coefficients along the way. So one way to help me figure out um, how I'm going to want to rewrite the Taylor series in some sum notation is to just write out the first couple of terms that I would have according to my Taylor series um, formula here and see what that leaves me with. So notice that um, the first term here would be negative 1 over 0 factorial times x minus pi to the 0. Okay, so I'm just kind of doing this formally so we can see what we have. I'd have 0 over 1 factorial times x minus pi. So we know that term's really just going to be 0. I'd have plus 1 over 2 factorial x minus pi squared. Then we'd have 0 over 3 factorial x minus pi cubed. And then negative 1 over 4 factorial x minus pi to the fourth. Okay dot 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 dot. So what am I noticing here? Well this term and this term here these are just gonna be zero. So really I'm only left with the even um, powered terms. Okay so only the even powers are what I'm left with so I'm gonna need to um, use that information when I write down the, the sum notation version of, of the Taylor series. What else do I notice here? Well, I also notice that the first term here is um, negative. Second term is positive, so I've got a negative term. Second um, non-zero term is positive, okay? 
our third non-zero term here is negative, so I've got only even powers, and I also have alternating signs. Okay, so let's think about how to use that to write down the Taylor series formula. Okay, so notice that this is going to be equal to a sum from n equals zero to infinity. So I want this to be my zeroth term, this to be my first term, and this to be my second term. Okay, I don't want to um, be getting the, these, these zero terms. That's um, not part of, of the, the, um, the Taylor series when I want to write this nice closed form here. So I need to then have the x minus a part not be x minus a to the n, but if I just want the even powers, I'll have x minus a, in this case x minus pi, to the 2n. Instead of over n factorial, it'll be over 2n factorial. And then I'll need a negative 1 to the power to deal with the alternating sign. So notice that I want it to be negative first um, when n equals 0. So negative 1 to the n plus 1 will get that correct pattern of signs. When n is 0, it'll be negative. When n is 1, it'll be positive. When n is 2, um, it'll be negative again. Okay, so this is our um, Taylor series for cosine x at pi. Okay, so notice that took a little bit more work because we had to figure out a, a formula here in terms of just these even powers. So writing out the terms can help you see what that um, full pattern is. Okay, so what about the radius of convergence here? How would we find that? Well, remember we used the ratio test to help us find um, radius of convergence. So I would look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1. Well, I do this in absolute value, so this negative 1 part will just become positive 1. So I'll have um, x minus pi to the 2 times n plus 1, all over 2 times n plus 1 factorial, divided by the a n, so that'll be 2 n factorial, over x minus pi to the 2 n. Okay, so what is this going to give us? So I've got the limit as n goes to infinity. This x minus pi here, this is x minus pi to the 2n plus 2. Okay, and this is 2n factorial. And this um, 2n plus 1 factorial will become 2n plus 2 factorial here, times x minus pi to the 2n. Okay, so let's look at how this is going to um, simplify. Okay, well the 2n plus 2 factorial, note that we can write that as 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. So the 2n factorials cancel. Okay, and then my um, x minus pi to the 2n plus 2 over x minus pi to the 2n is just going to become x minus pi squared. So notice that I have here um, x minus pi squared, okay, and in fact since that's squared I'm going to be able to drop these absolute value bars, um, all over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1, okay. So notice that for any x here, this um, numerator will just be a number, but the denominator will be some um, finite number. The denominator here will be getting bigger and bigger and bigger as n goes to infinity, so that limit will be equal to 0. Okay, so we can say that since that limit value of 0 is less than 1, okay, the series converges for all x, okay, since we're going to get 0 regardless of what x is, and we know it always converges at the center. Series converges for all x by the ratio test. Okay, so we're getting that the radius of convergence is infinity and the interval of convergence is negative infinity infinity. Okay, this will not always be the case. We just happened to see um, two examples where we had um, the interval of convergence being all real numbers. There are certainly other kinds of examples that we can have. So let me know if you have any questions on these two problems.